Hello and welcome to another chat. I was going to record a submarine chat, but there's so much going on in the world right now, in particular in the Mediterranean and Black Sea, that I thought I'd cover this. I've started a tracker of Russian Navy movements in the Mediterranean Black Sea with Damien Simon. And you can get updates to this at my website, hisutton.com. And of course, we'll be sharing it on Twitter. What I plan to do is walk you through this tracker, explain it to you, what the weapon systems are, why they're so important, and why Russia is likely to be amassing them in or concentrating them in the Mediterranean and Black Sea. This is a screenshot of the tracker. You can find it on my website, like I say, and we'll be updating it, of course. Firstly, the build-up. There's a lot in the news about the troop movements around Ukraine have been for weeks, it seems. The naval aspect has always been there, but has been less reported. More recently, however, the amphibious warfare ships have been sent to the Black Sea from the Arctic and from the Baltic have uh, made it onto the news. This is a picture from earlier today. Um, a amphibious warfare ship passing through the Bosphorus in Turkey into the Black Sea. But it's not just these amphibious warfare ships. There's also surface combatants, that's cruisers, destroyers, that type of thing. And of course, submarines and other weapon systems. And Russia is concentrating these primarily in the Mediterranean. Why is that? Well, it's mainly about aircraft carriers. The NATO forces have traditionally had a absolute dominance in aircraft carriers, principally, of course, the US Navy. That continues to this day, and there are three NATO aircraft carriers active in the Mediterranean. That's the Harry S. Truman, which is US Navy, the Cavour, and Charles de Gaulle. This is a really recent photo of them exercising together. Rather than counter these aircraft carriers with its own aircraft carriers, Although Russia or USSR did develop some aircraft carriers, it was never in contention. Instead, it's developed incredibly potent anti-ship missiles, generally speaking, bigger, more powerful, and probably better than those of other countries. It's been much more of a focus. And now it's deploying them in this area. The Mediterranean and the Black Sea are very relevant to this conflict, as is the Atlantic. Ukraine is the blue and yellow flag in the top right corner. And Russia is the red, or the, the white, blue and red flag, the red area. Crimea is the orange area. That is part of Ukraine, but it's been um, annexed by Russia for a few years and is de facto Russian territory. There's Russian bases there. Also, on the Mediterranean, Russia has a base at Tartus in Syria, which is very important. Now, the thing is that the Black Sea can only be accessed through the Bosphorus, which is a narrow strait, and that is controlled by Turkey and has limitations on what can pass through there. In particular, there's limitations on submarines and aircraft carriers. Overall, it means that NATO cannot pump warships into the Black Sea with the exception of Turkish ones. So the Black Sea is always going to be navally dominated by Russia in this, in this conflict. Additionally, the Mediterranean has a, a, the choke points at the Straits of Gibraltar on the western end and at the southeastern corner, the Suez Canal. So access in and out of the Mediterranean is very limited. The aircraft carriers that NATO has in the Mediterranean cannot pass into Black Sea, but their aircraft can still be relevant in any conflict. And if the conflict escalates, of course, Russia would naturally want to be able to counter these. And that's what appears to be happening. They're, in essence, focusing a lot of anti-carrier, a lot of anti-warship capabilities in the Mediterranean. Three main types of things. First one, service combatants, that's warships, cruisers, that sort of thing. Second one, submarines. The third one, land-based missiles. The service combatants are being led by the Slava-class cruisers. Russia only has three of these, and all of them are being deployed. There's two currently in the 
in the Mediterranean. One's normally in the Arctic and in the, and the other in the Pacific. They've both come to the Mediterranean. And a third one, which is normally in the Black Sea, is coming also into Mediterranean from the Black Sea. These ships are armed with 16 of the extremely powerful SSN-12 sandbox missile, also known as the Vulcan. And this has a very long range and a, a extremely high speed, about Mach 3. These are true carrier killers, although they're now slightly dated. But they're very potent. Additionally, the cruisers don't operate a, alone. They're escorted by other warships and uh, resupply vessels and that sort of thing. In particular, the Admiral Gorshkov class frigate. Apologies for my Russian translations. I'm not even going to bother looking them up, to be honest. Um, it, that can be armed with 16 caliber Onyx missiles. You'll also see on the news that it can carry the Zircon missile, which is a hypersonic weapon. Very impressive. I don't believe that's actually in surface yet. So think of them in terms of caliber and Onyx anti-ship missiles. Additionally, they're going to be escorted by Oudeloy class destroyers. These are very potent warships, very large as well, but they don't have much of an anti-ship capability, generally speaking, certainly not anti-carrier. They're instead geared towards anti-submarine warfare. Surface vessels have a disadvantage that we're we can track them comparatively easy. We can't really keep 24 hour track on all of the vessels, but periodically we can identify them in satellite images or other, other sources. This is a satellite image from a few days ago of Marshal Ustinov, the Arctic or the Northern Fleet cruiser now in the Mediterranean. And trust me, that red sort of colored dot, that is, um, the, the cruise, and we can be confident of that. So where are they? Let's say they're operating in groups, so we're just representing the, the cruisers and the range of the, the sandbox missiles that are carried by the cruisers. That's the longest range missiles of the group. The Marsha Ustinov, that's the Northern Fleet or Arctic group, is currently somewhere in the Western Mediterranean. The latest fix, not 100% um, guaranteed, but it's somewhere south of Sardinia. It seems credible. Additionally, the Pacific Fleet have a uh, have been have come through the Suez Canal rather, and they've been in Tartus. We now know they've sailed. They're somewhere in the eastern Mediterranean. The escorts from these can actually move quite far from the, the cruisers. And we know that one has recently called in Greece. So there is more ships moving around than just seen here. And additionally, Moskova, the third one, is currently in um, the Black Sea. We know it's less Sevastopol. It's aiming for the Bosphorus. It's going to come into the Mediterranean. So in a few days, we'll have three Slava-class cruisers and their respective escorts operating in the Mediterranean. You can see that with three ships there, they can dominate the Mediterranean from an anti-ship missile perspective. Additionally, there are submarines. In this context, we're talking primarily about non-nuclear submarines. There may be nuclear submarines in the mix as well, but we simply don't know. Um, Russia has seven non-nuclear kilo class submarines based in Black Sea, but actually forward deploys them to Syria. So the actual layout is that we have three of them in the Mediterranean based in Syria and three of them in the Black Sea right now. And if the seventh one is in maintenance in Black Sea. The ones in Tartus in Syria have left port. So two of them are likely patrolling somewhere in the Eastern Mediterranean. And a third one we know is actually heading to the Black Sea. So there will be four in the Black Sea. The ones in the Black Sea, the latest information we have is that they're still in port, but they have been bombed up as it were. So they're, they're equipped with missiles and torpedoes ready, to, ready for combat. These submarines don't operate in groups. They may to an extent be coordinated with service vessels, but essentially uh, are work on their own because they're extremely potent and they can be very hard to deconflict. It is the real risk of blue on blue or red on red in this case. 
Okay, the third dimension is land-based missiles, in particular the Bastion P missile, known as Stooge to NATO. This fires the P-800 Onyx, which is a very modern, very capable weapon. These are highly mobile, so they're quite difficult to pin down where they are. The missiles themselves have a range of about 350 kilometers or 220 miles and a speed of two and a half times the speed of sound. They're, they are quite low flying. They're extremely modern. They're, they're closely related to the Indian missile, the Brahmas, that you'll hear about. Say so we can't be certain where they are and they can always move them. However, we do know that they have them in Syria, or I have used them in Syria, so there's likely to be one in Tartus. There's also likely to be a battery in Sevastopol and one likely somewhere near Sochi. Actually, just today, there was some video of one of their batteries being moved by road from the area between Crimea and, and um, mainland Russia. So they're definitely in play right now. Okay, this is what you get when you put it all together. Say this is uploaded to the website, hisutton.com. If you like it, please do share. Please do give it a like, give a script, subscription. Um, as I say, it was unscripted. I'm sure that showed, but hopefully you understand. Thank you very much.